word, we stand right now, Lord God. Yes, you Jesus. said your word will accomplish purpose and shall not return void. So we are standing on your promises, Lord. And we are just letting go. We're going to let you have your way. You are God Almighty. You know all things, Lord. So you know what we, your people, need today. So, Father God, I humble myself. I open myself up, Lord. I give myself to you, Lord. Lord, speak to me and through me. And, Lord God, prepare the hearts of your people to receive what you have for us today. And, Father God, you say there's a blessing in obedience. And, Lord God, we give to you right now to have your way. Bless, Lord. Use me. Speak, Lord God. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We ask everybody to join me as we turn to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 2. We're looking at verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy. The Word of God says, 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, it says, Thou therefore do hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Amen. For your consideration, we're speaking on the subject, be a good soldier. Right. You may be seated in the presence of God. Be a good soldier. I like to thank God for this opportunity to just be a soldier for him today. I thank God who has saved me, who the head of my life. I thank him for salvation. I thank God for our senior pastor, Pastor Michael. I thank God for our elders of this house, Elder Monica and Elder Sorrell, and all of our deacons and deaconesses. And thank God for the mothers of our church and their absent, Mother Mary, Mother Russian. We want to just thank God for each of you, my sisters and brothers, the saints of God that are here today. Thank God for you, Brother Harris, being here with us today. Thank God for everyone that make up this assembly. We thank God for those that may be viewing via really our internet and may even be listening to our teleconference. So we just want to get the word out of any way we can. Be a good soldier. I want to thank God for our veterans. I don't know if any veterans in the house, but if there are, we want to just thank God for them. I know we had one here, come on. It's our veteran. Come on, I want you to recognize our veterans. All right, thank God, thank God. Amen. Amen. See, they know what it means to be a soldier. This past Monday, the nation honored all of our veterans for their service and their sacrifice that you've made for this great country. And we thank you. And we look at this passage of scripture today. We see that our focus scripture compares the Christian to a soldier. And see, Paul here weighs in on this in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 7. The word says, render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So it is appropriate for us to honor our soldiers. It is appropriate for us to recognize because even we're at home sleeping or enjoying the safety or the comfort, our soldiers are out there on the battlefield for us. And there are a lot of important lessons we can learn today, Elder Sorrell, from just looking at our soldiers. God used Paul to pen this passage of scripture. And Paul here realized that his time was coming very close on this earth to end. But see, Paul was a good soldier. And because he was a good soldier, it wasn't important for him to be delivered 
But he wanted to make sure that this work, this Christian church, continue on. So Paul wrote this letter to his son Timothy in the gospel, but he also was writing to you and to me. And Paul was telling his son in the gospel, get ready, because he says in verse 3 there, therefore endure hardness. Paul realized that to be a good soldier of Christ, you have to endure hardship. He realized that when you choose, when you answer the call, see, soldiers answer the call. They either have been called up through the um, draft or through the enlisting. But either way, a call go forth and a soldier answer the call. So we as Christians, when Jesus called us, we should move forward and answer the call. So we want to examine how a soldier life and a Christian life compares. There are five branches of military, and I don't know a whole lot, but when I was doing this mess, I said, I need to read a little bit about the military. I found a lot more than I wanted to know, but I had to also remember that you can only tell so much. So there, was, there are five different branches of military, and it was education to me because I had couple more, but you may not make that mistake. There are, there are the Army, there is the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. Now before I did this research, I was like somebody maybe saying, what about the Armed Reserve and the National Guard? They're not a branch, per se. They are really support to the army. The army is supported by these two reserve forces, and that is the Arm Reserve, the Army Reserve and the National Guards. They are there so the army can tap into these resources for training and equipment during times of need. Thank God for our Arm Reserve and our National Guards because they also play an important role. They can be activated. But they are not considered a part of the military branch as the five that I named to you. So we have the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine, and the Coast Guard. And they all have some things in common. And one thing they have to have in common, they have to be willing to answer the call, they have to be loyal, they have to be willing to fight, and they also have to be willing to follow orders. You cannot, so we say, be a good soldier. You can't be a good soldier. You can be a soldier that gets dishonorably discharged, but to be a good soldier, you have to follow orders, you have to be willing to fight against the opposition, and you have to be loyal. So for Christians, it's important that we follow orders also. We, you do realize we have a commanding chief, right? And it's not President Obama. It's God Almighty. Now, if you are a true Christian, you will follow orders from God. God has placed over each of his church pastors and leaders. And sometimes we get caught up and say, God, talk to me. I don't have to listen to what so and so, so and so say. But God has a plan. And if you want to be in order, you want to be a good soldier, you got to follow leadership. And you got to realize who your enemies are. Your enemies is not your member in the church. Your enemy should not be your family. The enemy is Satan, even though Satan sometimes may use somebody in the church. He may use even you to fight against yourself. But you got to realize that your enemy is Satan. So we, it's time for Christians to stop fighting one another and fight the enemy. The enemy is Satan. See, Lucifer was in heaven. God created him a perfect being. He was beautiful, very gifted. Read about him over there in Ezekiel. 
And because he was so gifted and so beautiful, he stood, stood next to the throne of God, he got lifted up in pride. And that same thing is happening today. The more God equipped, the more God anointed, the more God blessed, we will allow self to get lifted up. And before we know it, we want people to bow to us. See, that's what Lucifer did. He got caught up with himself and his gifts and his talent and his beauty. And he wanted to exalt his kingdom above God. To all we have members want to raise up in opposition to leadership. And God is saying today, be a good soldier. Now we got to look at the Navy motto. The Navy says, ready and able. So we, too, must be, as Christians, we must be ready and able to serve the Lord. We must be ready to serve the Lord with honor. We must be ready to serve the Lord with courage. And we must be ready to serve the Lord with commitment. So we can learn some things from the Navy. A good soldier must have the courage to take a stand for righteousness. A good soldier must have the courage to do the right thing, even in difficult times. We have to realize that God has chosen us. We didn't choose God. God chose us. Now, we have to answer the call. We have a choice. We can ignore the call on our lives and do what we want to do. God will allow you to do that. But I come to serve notice to you if you want to be blessed. You want to receive all God has for you, answer the call, and become a good soldier, be ready and able to move when God calls you. Yeah. And so you don't even have to be prepare yourself. The Holy Spirit will prepare you. If you want to be a good soldier, begin to spend time with God. Begin to read this word. Begin to pray. Begin to meditate. Begin to hide this word in your heart. You will become a good soldier. The Holy Spirit will begin to chisel and cut off and prune and purge those sinful things away from you. So then when the call come, you be ready and able to move forward. You won't have to make excuses. I'm reminded of how we as Christians sometimes, Ayla, political way of saying no and said, let me pray about it. Now, you know all the time you're going to say no. But you say, let me pray about it. And then you, a lot of time, don't even get back with them and give the answer. Then when they come back, it's, oh, well, I prayed about it. I, I can't do that. But see, the Navy motto, it says ready and able. So if you want to be a good soldier, you got to be ready and able to serve the Lord. At any time, all the time, on a moment's notice. I liken that to being on a job that requires you to be on call 24-7. When your number is called, you can't look at that call ID and act no like you didn't see it. You, you answer that call because your job, your livelihood depends on that. Well, the same is true with a Christian, a good soldier. We on post 24-7 when we're asleep and that phone rang in the midnight hour. You should get up and be fall on your knees and begin to cry out to God and intercede on behalf of that saint. And if they need help, get up out of your bed and go and see how you can help them. Be a good soldier. The Air Force motto is above all. Jesus is greater and above anything in this world. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Everything in between, Jesus has control. So if you want to be a good soldier, you got to realize that Jesus is above all and he is God. So we are, should be ready to serve a God that is above all. There should be no reason that we are not willing to answer whenever he calls us. Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible for God. 
God can do all things but fail. And a good soldier, if you lean in and depend him on God, if you trust in God, you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. If God calls you, God will equip you. And when he equips you to be a good soldier, you need to begin to march. March at the beat of the Holy Spirit. As the drum be going forth, the Spirit of God is moving. And good soldier march in obedience. Whenever we need a breakthrough or whatever need we have, God can provide. So a good soldier will not falter or fail because a good soldier will keep their eyes on the mission. A good soldier will press. When you fall down, that good soldier keep their eyes on the prize and on target. And they climb, they get up, they may have to slide on the stomach. They may have to crawl or whatever they got to do. They are not going to stop. Because one thing all soldiers have in come, they will not give up. They will not quit. And a good soldier, their motto of all soldiers, you won't leave a fallen comrade in the enemy's hand. Now we got to realize, we got enemy. Satan got his imps all around, and Satan is so bad and so bold, he coming to God's church to try to get soldiers. So we are truly good soldiers. We want to be good soldiers. We got to be willing to pick up that sister, that brother that has fallen down. So we accept the Lord. We will be good soldiers, and we will keep our faith in God and our eyes fixed upon him. The Coast Guard motto is always ready. Always ready. Paul reminds us that a good soldier must always be ready to fight a good fight. 2 Timothy 4 2, Paul says, the word of God says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exalt with all long suffering and doctrine. In other words, uh, the, we have to be, as, as the Coast God says, always ready to be a good soldier. You got to be always ready to sound the battle cry. Got to be always ready to hold up the banner of Jesus Christ. We got to be always ready to lift up the name of Jesus. We got to be always ready to give up a calling of our profession, of our evidence, of our faith. We got to be willing to explain and help people understand what that word of God means because we are called, we are commissioned to be good soldiers. And in order to be good soldiers, we got to study the word of God to show ourselves approval. And if we study God's word, then we can rightly live out the word of God. A good soldier will be ready to go when God calls. Go where he tells us to go. Serve faithfully where he leads us. A good soldier is loyal to God. A good soldier loves Pastor Michael just like Christ loved. A good soldier gives just like Christ gave. A good soldier will separate themselves from messy people. A good soldier will not be caught up in lies and hypocrisy. A good soldier will not lose their lip to gossip and tighten their lips up on things of God. I want that to sink in. A good soldier won't lose and won't, won't have your mouth talking and moving and on gossip. And then when the word of God or, or something about dealing with the word, you tight lips. Can't say anything. That's not a good soldier. A good soldier should be ready to take a stand for the Lord at any time. The Marine Corps motto is always faithful. The word of God is our weapon. And if we want to always be faithful, we have to study the word of God to show ourselves approved unto God so we'll be a soldier, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of God. A good soldier, always faithful. We got to be faithful to God's word. We got to make sure on a regular daily basis, we study God's word. On a daily basis, we are eating from the word of God. I dare say most of us won't go a day without some physical food, but you try to go without the spiritual food. 
So a good soldier, you will hide that word in your heart. A good soldier will devour that word, will eat that word. Let that word become a living fountain flowing up in your belly, become that living water. As the Holy Ghost begin to move on you, a good soldier will be able to share the word of God with conviction and with the power of the Holy Ghost. And that sinner that's fallen because that good soldier has love in her heart, because that good soldier got the Holy Spirit moving, that sinner will begin to see the light. That light is Jesus Almighty. Will see the light shining through you. So that sinner was falling in darkness because he didn't know or because she didn't know, but a good soldier will let the love of God fill in her heart. A good soldier will let the Holy Spirit take control. They will let go and then as the Holy Spirit begin to move, that person who was walking in darkness will begin to see the light. So I tell you, a good soldier must be ready and able to stand up and to serve the Lord through the power and the might of the Holy Ghost. A good soldier is totally loyal to his commander. A good soldier is totally loyal to the commander who have chosen us. That's what Paul was talking about here in verse 4, the second Timothy 2, 4. He said, no man that war is entangling himself with affairs of this life. In other words, he said, you are a good soldier. You don't get caught up in all the cares of this world, but you are focusing on the mission at hand. You're focusing on the spiritual thing that God has called you to do. He has chosen you as a soldier, and you've asked said that call so as a soldier of God your joy your purpose is to glorify God your purpose is to bring honor and glory to God your purpose is to lift up his name and then we look at the army motto the army motto is to protect and to defend now fortunately for us we don't have to defend God's word God's word stands on its own. And honestly, we don't have to defend our faith. We, have to, we don't have to argue about our faith. We just should simply follow Jesus' example. And Jesus said, it is written. But see, you can't say it is written if you are not studying the word of God. If you're not studying the word to find a proof in the sight of God so you can write the value of the word of truth when falsehood come or when somebody attack you and you have to try to make it seem like you know tell me you try to be argumentative. But when you are studying the word of God, you become a good soul. You know the word. The Holy Spirit will bring that word back to your mind and you say, it is written. Typically, when you find somebody to argue about the word of God, they're trying to convince themselves. But if you trust that word and the Holy Ghost, then you don't have to argue about that word. You just simply say, it is written. So the Holy Spirit will give us understanding and he will give us the power to write and divide the word of truth so that we don't have to defend or argue about the Bible because the Bible is its best interpreter. And we have just allowed the Holy Spirit to give us understanding. And through the spiritual understanding, the Holy Spirit then becomes the master teacher. So anything we want to know about the word of God, submit, pray to God, and he'll give the Holy Spirit, open you up. He'll show you how to discern right from wrong and search line upon line, priest upon priest, a little here, a little there. And as we do this, the Holy Spirit begin to unveil for us a deeper understanding of what that word is saying. The soldier creed is that I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will not leave a fallen comrade. This is what the, a soldier creed is. All soldier. It doesn't matter you're part of the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marine, uh, Coast Guard, or whatever the case may be. That is the creed that the soldier lives by. To be a good soldier, we must say, I will always put God's mission first. 
I will not accept defeat because through Christ Jesus, we are more than conqueror. We have to realize that we are not fighting this battle alone. Christ, the command in chief, is right there with us. And because he's God Almighty, when he speaks, the elements of this earth will obey. When Christ speaks, he can say, peace to the storm that Satan is trying to bring up in your life. When the Holy Spirit began to move in your heart, then you respond to that love that Jesus gives out and then you realize that you're not fighting alone because your command in chief which is Jesus himself there with us and in the midst of the battle that Satan tried to bring up on us all the storms of this life that he tried to cause to come against us Jesus can just stand up and say peace be still and when Jesus says peace be still Satan cannot move one out it's done so as a good soldier, we must know that Jesus is indeed our captain and our command in chief. And a good soldier always follow orders, fights the opposition, and is loyal. A good soldier always follow orders, fights the opposition, and is loyal. A good soldier realizes that his mission is to do God's will. It is God's will that the soldiers share the everlasting gospel. It is God's will that the soldier share the good news of Jesus' soon return. It is God's will that the good soldier shares the love of Jesus Christ. It is God's will that the good soldier live a holy life that will glorify God's name through a righteous living and abide in faith in Jesus Christ. A good soldier is ready to stand for Jesus. A good soldier is ready to help somebody else along their way. A good soldier follows Jesus' order. A good soldier keep the faith of Jesus Christ. A good soldier keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ. A good soldier, just like any other military force, a good soldier answers a call. A good soldier realizes that we may not, when going to boot camp, basic training they call it, boot camp, that you may not understand what's being said to you or why they're giving you an order. But one thing for sure a good soldier learned to do is to obey the order given unto them. So we as God's children, we have to realize we make up our mind to be a good soldier for Christ. Satan get real busy. We have to realize that Satan pulled him black playbook out. And when Satan pulled his black playbook out, he began to look at the different plays to see how he can snare you, how he can fill your life with misery. He'll play, bring his playbook out and you'll see how he can go against your finances. And he'll fling his playbook out to see how he can go against your marriage. Sometimes he'll try to go against your finances, your marriage, and your health. And Satan knows that when he attacks your marriage and your finances and your health, he's going to be able to mess with your mind but I come to tell you today that a good soldier stands and fight a good soldier knows that they are not fighting alone a good soldier stand up and know that Jesus right there when Satan try to come against you a good soldier realize that the hardship that Paul was talking about is that he got to trust God because see Jesus tells in his word that trouble will come a good good soldier will not run from trouble. A good soldier will not run from hardship. A good soldier will stand and fight because a good soldier knows that he's more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. A good soldier knows that God is on his side. So I come to tell you today that you better watch yourself. If you don't find yourself boxing with Satan from time to time, you better check yourself because you're probably walking with the devil. You're no longer fighting, but you're walking with the devil. But when Satan coming against you to be a good soldier, you just stand for God and just know that God is on your side. And see, you don't have to take my word. I want the young people to realize that we we, we are chosen soldier. We have we are chosen to go against the grain. We're not supposed to be like air fit in. 
We are f- called to be different. Young people, you're supposed to not to be like everybody else. You're supposed to be different. So don't try to fit in. Jesus tells us that the world will hate us. Jesus let us know in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, These things I've spoken to you, and in me you may have peace. Oh, yes. Jesus said, in me you may have peace. But he says, in the world you should have tribulation. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus wants to know, in him we can have peace. In the midst of confusion, in the midst of the battle, Jesus said that we can have peace in him. Jesus says in the world, we're going to have trial and tribulation. I want you to know that trouble will come. Hallelujah. Know that there is a different in accepting hardship and an agreement of hardship. I want you to understand you don't have to agree to have trouble, but know that trouble will come. Know that trouble will come. You don't have to agree to have it, but remember Jesus said that you have tribulation. He said you're going to have trouble. So as a trial and tribulation and the agony of this world come against you, I come to tell you that we are going to be victorious. I come to tell you that we ought to be good soldiers. I come to tell you to stand still and fight. Don't tuck tail and run, but you just stand and you fight. Jesus wanted us to realize that he said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. He said, I go to a fair place for you. And if I go, I'll come again. And Jesus says, I come quickly with my reward with me. So a good soldier stands for right. A good soldier will join the fight. A good soldier is loyal to God and stand on guard. A good soldier endure to the end. A good soldier will not quit and give up. A good soldier will not leave another soldier in the enemy camp. So as Christians, we cannot be content with people full of sin. We cannot be content with that family going through and you not doing anything to help them out. We cannot be content with drugs and violence and sex and morality, immorality, tests and tests in our city. We got to stand up and fight. We got to be good soldiers we got to stand up and fight. God's let us know that we got the priest's everlasting gospel. He let us know that this got to go to every kindred, every nation, every tongue, and every people. So we got to let people know the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So if you want to be a good soldier, you got to be ready to on a moment's notice to fight. To be a good soldier, you got to realize that God is above all. To be a good soldier, you got to be ready to go for it when Jesus call you as a good soldier. You got to be always faithful, ready to do what God call you to do as a good soldier. You got to be ready to protect and defend those that put in your spirit of influence. Parents, we got to realize that God has given us these children and we got to make sure we fight for them. We got to make sure that they know we love them. We got to make sure they don't be afraid of us. We got to make sure we don't speak mean to our children or be abusive to our children but as a good soldier we got to stand for righteousness when crime is all around and violence is on every side an effective drug society we got to know that if we stand on God's word God will bring us victory we got to not be defeated we got to not give in to the evil that surround us but a good soldier is ready to fight and a good soldier Stand on the word of God. A good soldier, let the Holy Ghost have his way. A good soldier, let go. A good soldier, praise all the time. A good soldier, follow Jesus.
walk, a good soldier walk when Jesus walk, a good soldier stand still when Jesus stand still, a good soldier turn about faith when Jesus go back, a good soldier obey God's command, a good soldier is Lord, so I come to tell you to be a good soldier, you got to love the Lord, to be a good soldier, you got to trust the Lord, to be a good soldier, you got to study the word of God, and to be a good soldier, you got to obey the word of God. And as a good soldier, you're going to realize that your job is to follow order and fight the opposition and be loyal to God.